This weekend at the March for Our Lives, Americans will hear an outpouring of emotions about guns, shootings, and school safety. Of course, that's important. That is important, but so too are the facts. So tonight, we want to spend some time on an in-depth look at gun violence in our schools. With the help of some of our corporate colleagues, hear now some perspective ahead of tomorrow's march. School shootings drive headlines and dominate our fears, yet statistics tell us our schools remain relatively safe. A few years ago, the National Center for Education Statistics concluded almost 99% of all homicide victims between the ages of 5 and 18 died not inside a school, but outside of one. In 2016, car crashes killed 668 times more children than school shootings. Not that any act of violence inside a school is insignificant, it's just that context remains critical. In 1940, a junior high principal in South Pasadena, California shot and killed five the first mass school shooting to garner national headlines, the first of what would become many. Our criteria count cases involving shooters who opened fire on many on school grounds. 1956, Prince George's County, Maryland, one killed, two injured. 1961, Denver, Colorado, one killed, one injured. 1966, Austin, Texas, 16 dead, 32 injured, when a former student turned into a sniper on top of the University of Texas clock tower. We counted four in the 60s, then five in the 70s, 16 in the 80s, 16 in the 90s, a number that includes the shootings in and outside of Colorado's Columbine High School. 31 between 2000 and 2009, 62 since then. A trend, yes, but an incomplete story nonetheless, considering some of the upward tick can be contributed to the fact that the FBI only started tracking school shootings right around the time the numbers spiked. In other words, our list was bound to include more recent cases. Wanting a better analysis, we came up with a second list involving only the school shootings that fell under the current federal definition of a mass killing, a definition that says three or more killings in a single incident. Here, our list shrunk to 32 cases. In the 72 years before Columbine, we counted 15, with a notable increase in frequency starting in the 90s. Since Columbine, 16, or one every 1.2 years, a nearly annual reminder of a school's vulnerabilities. Wanting to know more, we looked for patterns as well. Here's what we found. Of the 32, 78% involved a former or current student. All but one involved a male shooter, all but two involving a lone gunman. Of the cases where we could track the guns used, only three involved an illegally purchased or stolen weapon, although in six cases, guns were taken from a family member. 17 shootings ended in an arrest, 13 in suicide, and police killed two. And perhaps most importantly, in all but three cases, we found warning signs identified prior to the murders, like the shooter in Virginia Tech, who two years prior was deemed an imminent danger by a judge, or the shooter at a school in California who had been the subject of a domestic violence call the day before the attack. Reminders that we can do more to prevent something that's happening more frequently, something that's driving even more headlines, dominating even more fears, knowing they remain, thankfully, rare. And so there was a lot to that, a lot of numbers, a lot of information, so you can watch that video again uh, and share it with your friends and colleagues. Uh, that's posted right now on our website and app. And definitely, as a news person, you know, we always follow what's happening immediately, but it's always so great to have yeah. that perspective. Especially in these times, we're gonna have this big rally tomorrow and of course have a lot of coverage of that, but it's important to be able to take a look at the bigger picture. We do wanna give our thanks uh, to our friends at Nine News in Denver for their hard work on that story. One of the mass shootings um, that actually was profiled there happened here in Western New York in Olean back in 1974. Three people were killed in that particular shooting. So we should never think that Western New York has not been affected right. by all of this. And of course, you can read more about that and more about checking out that interactive article Michael just told us about. We have it posted on WGRZ.com. Also, a reminder, our parent company, Tegna, is hosting a town hall tonight with a focus on school safety, and we'll be streaming that in just a few seconds on our website and our app. And of course, coverage all weekend of the rally happening in Western New York and also in our nation's capital. Right now, Channel 2 News at 6 starts.